Hello once again to the McClesk YouTube channel or video. And this is going to be the top 10, or well, my personal top 10 games of the year. Uh, I haven't played many games this year, well, released this year. I've played about 10 games that were released this year. Well, I've played more, but I've played, I think, about 20 games that were released this year. So not much. So you might see some crappy games that you won't like on here. I had to resolve to doing re-releases on my list. But I still think they're a bit different than the original version. So number 10. Call of Duty Ghosts. Surprisingly, I've chosen Call of Duty Ghosts to be number 10. I didn't want it to be on this list, but I had more fun with that more than Modern, Modern Warfare 3. But I just like this one. I think this was Infinity... Not Infinity Ward's best game, but... One of their better games. It had bots, which is a big plus for me. Because I don't want to play online. Because I suck at it. And I got to play with bots, which... I get to unlock everything, which is better, in my opinion. That means I could just run around doing dual M9s, which I won't, because I don't, because I suck at it, and I won't get any kills with it. So number nine, Injustice Gods Among Us. Ah, uh, from the guys who brought Mortal Kombat, the guys who made Mortal Kombat, brought us a DC fighting game. I sold it to get money. <laughs> For GTA 5 when that came when that was coming out, so I can't play it anymore. But it got dis it got boring towards the end, uh, like around September time, just because that game got released earlier in the year. I'm not actually sure when it got released, but I know it got released this year, and I bought it with my money, so it must be a been around my birthday because I don't get much money any other way. Number eight, Pokenite Two. This was the first game I've pre-ordered, and it was over Steam. I had a blast playing Pokenite One. I actually got a deal on Steam where it was pre-order Pokenite Two, and you can get Pokenite One for free. And that was good. I got all the items in Pokenite One. I've gotten one item. From Pokenite 2. Wait. Yeah, one item from Pokenite 2. Uh, I stopped playing that after a while. Just because I got... I played other games. That's all. But Pokenite 2, fun game. Uh, and it was just... Not as good as the first one, in my opinion. But still good. Number 7. Even though this was an expansion pack, it still, to me, counts as a game. Sims 3 University. Sims 2 University was probably known as the best expansion pack to The Sims 2, which is, has been known for the best PC game of all time. I have proof because I've got Sims 2 somewhere here. Yep. I do. Uh, I'll probably show some footage on it. But yeah, Sims 3 University was just awesome, in my opinion. I I didn't have internet the week that came out, and I was going crazy. Because I'm usually used to internet and stuff. So, no internet, no internet, and... I don't know, I forgot what it says in The Shining about Jack adult is a dull boy. But, yeah. Sims 3 University at number 7. Number 6! Which was a recent game that was originally launched in... Two th oh, I wouldn't say 2000. Which was originally launched in 2011. Minecraft. Now for the PS3. 
I think that is highly more addictive than the PC version. Just because on console, I'm used to playing alone, just playing by myself. And on PC, I'm used to playing with community and many more people. So Minecraft PS3 is uh, just awesome. And my friend who has it, I'm not going to say his name for privacy reasons, uh, sort of built a house. And because there's no tutorial world in PC, and I can understand why, because you, you'd think about everybody who plays it on PC who knows what they're doing. Number five, the top five, Animal Crossing New Leaf. This game is so addicting. Uh, my town tune is Zelda's Lullaby. I'm actually going to go get it now. So, Zelda's Lullaby from Ocarina of Time is my town tune. I'm going to go head to the town hall to show you it. But, Animal Crossing New Leaf at number 5 is because it just gives you another world outside your world. And I put not many hours into this game, but yeah, just... Okay, so I'm in the town hall right now, talking to Isabel, who is the secretary, and is a dog. Okay, so here it is. Uh, yep, that's <laughs> Zelda's lullaby, and this is Isabel singing it. Uh, I'm not sure if you could hear that clearly, but yeah. So, it's for the 3DS. Uh, and people don't really like Nintendo nowadays. nowadays. Which I don't understand why. I think it's just because, you know, the Wii U. But I still think Nintendo is one of the best developers of all time. Number four. The only next-gen title on this, uh... Not including Minecraft, which was... I guess you could say that's next-gen, because it was also coming out on PS4 and Xbox One. But Forza 5 is number five, 4 for the Xbox One. I don't own an Xbox One, but at EB Games, they had four Xbox Ones that you could just play around on, and they had the demo for Forza 5, and I had a blast on that. Uh, probably just because I was... Looking at all the graphics and it was just so awesome and feeling the controller But not because of that it's because I Feel like those cars are easier to control than the cars in Gran Turismo 5 If you know what I'm saying number three The Legend of Zelda link between worlds. This is my first Legend of Zelda game. I owned and I bet it and at first, I didn't really spend many hours on it, but towards the end, I stayed up all night raiding, I wouldn't say raiding dungeons, but going through dungeons, defeating enemies, and finding out where the master ore is, so I can get the, ma so I can max out the power of my master sword. Number two, Pokemon X and Y. I love the Pokemon series. I stopped at Pokemon Black and White, and I started at Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which is really a weird start, but it it hooked me onto Pokemon, to say. And then Pokemon Black and White really drew me away, Ooh. and then X and Y pulled me back, and it was one of the most fun games I've had, and I completed it in about a week. And it was just so damn fun.
And if you're a Pokemon fan and you think X and Y isn't really your game, get it. Just just get it. Number one, it's obviously Grand Theft Auto V. Even though I haven't been playing it recently, it's still the best game of the year. Uh, literally, it won game of the year. But I got it the day it came out and I flipped shit after my dad called me and said... It says you need 8 gigabytes, so have you got 8 gigabytes, was it 8 gigabytes or 8 megabytes? Gigabytes, it was gigabytes, obviously. And, I just flipped shit, I was watching White Boy 7 Streets video, and, it was just so exciting, I stayed up all night, I think, playing it. And that's when my first Vine came along. Don't watch it, it sucks. But, yeah. I finished it in 5 days. And, spoiler alert, I picked A. I'm not going to really spoiler it, but I picked A. And if you haven't finished it, seriously, too bad. Just pick C. Just pick C. Um, so I had to do it all over again, and it was all worth it. I could play that game over and over again. And it's just so fun. What drew me away from it was actually the th uh, Animal Crossing and all that. But also because of the other games that I got for Christmas. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, Red Max Play 3 and stuff like that. But and Grand Theft Auto Online is a pretty big flop. Which is pretty disappointing. But other than that, those are my top 10 games of the year. Number 10, Call of Duty Ghosts. Number 9, Injustice Gods Among Us. Number 8, Pokemon 2. Number 7, Sims 3 University. Number 6, Minecraft PS3. Number 5, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Number 4, Forza 5. Number 3, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. Po uh, number 2, Pokemon X and Y. And number 1, GTA 5. Thanks for watching. And subscribe. See Sims 2. Number one PC game of all time.